We're going to go ahead and share this. I'm going to be talking to Mr. David Fox today. Just a second. Oh, yeah, we go. Mr. David Fox. Let me see here. I do not see a live link on Mad Talk TV shows yet. One second. There it is now. I do see it. You we see are live? Share- there we go. Yes, I do. We are live. Share it to my show right there. Live now. Okay, great. Mr. David Fox. Yes, sir. How are you? Oh, doing great. George, it's a pleasure actually being on your show. Man, uh, yesterday was crazy, right? Oh, my gosh. That was crazy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we, we, brilliant, but crazy. That was a lot of fun. It, we made it through. Some way, somehow, we made it through. <laughs> So uh, one thing, one thing I want to talk about today, uh, obviously, is I want to focus on business. I want to focus on entertainment business. And a lot of my friends yesterday, when they saw the Financial Literacy Film Festival, were like, "Okay, now I have a better understanding of what's going on. What is this thing?" Perfect. And, and so I thought that's pretty cool. Uh, I didn't realize a lot of the, the missing information in there. And so as an executive producer uh, of one of the short films, I just want to kind of introduce you to some of the audience and also want to talk about business. A lot of our friends who were involved with the short films had a lot of business questions for you because they know you're one of the financiers of a project. So uh, uh, you, you come, you come with a consulting background, a training background and uh you know a lot about this SBA thing, this uh, stimulus package. That's correct. Uh, Francisco, are, are you down there, Francisco? We see you. Can you hear me? Yes, we do. Uh, you recently, you you said that you did already file for the stimulus package? Yeah, I submitted the package one and it became available. Uh, once you go on the SBA website, it tells you different type of options uh, that is offered. And definitely you want to look at, your county, you'll be able to put in your 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 zip code, let you know if your county is under the, the COVID-19 disaster. Once it is, it will pop you right into the link that you need to. And it's a quick little application. It took about five, 10 minutes, and that was it. Mostly waiting now on the answer on the on the reply back process. That's perfect. Yeah, Francisco, that's that's exactly right. The the even on the website itself, uh, they talk about how it's gonna be a two or two and a half hour process, and that's just simply not true. So uh, it's very quick. Uh, it's not difficult to go to. Actually, I can uh, share a link with you. David, is there any way of making your audio a little bit uh, higher at all? Let's see. How about that? Whoop. All right. Is this a little bit better? Yeah. Okay. You're good. Oh, you're sharing your video. Yeah, yeah. he's sharing. With the zoom well, actually i wanted to share um you know this is the link like if people actually wanted to to see what it would what it's like could you click on it so they could see that too yeah absolutely so once oh. you end up getting this link uh, i want you to be able to to write it down if you don't have it can you, so you copy can... and paste that in the comment section there for us sure. all right cool thank you so much absolutely so you guys, this link is for small business owners. This is the Small Business Administration, the SBA. Uh, there's $10,000 grant or stimulus package on up. There's different packages. Uh, but this is something that Mr. Fox wanted to share with us. I also want to have Francisco on the call because uh, he's already gone through the process. He shared with us how, how simple it is. And if, if you would take just a, a, maybe one minute or so, Francisco, for our Spanish speaking guests, so we could share this with our uh, people in Puerto Rico. Uh, we have a lot of the, the, we have a business group there. It's called Small Business Puerto Rico. Just a, a one minute direction there. They do have an SBA and maybe they would qualify. So uh, if you would just please share in Spanish. Well, buenas noches. Mi nombre es Francisco Méndez. Uh, vamos a estar hablando un poquito sobre el aspecto del, del SBA loan, el proceso que tienen y la forma en cómo aplicar para tener acceso a esos fondos. Dado a la, a la declaración de emergencia dado por el presidente, si uno ingresa a la página del SBA.gov, va a haber uno el link directamente del, del de COVID-19, de Sats Release Fund. En ese aspecto, mucha gente tiene un aspecto que el proceso es bien largo, que mucho hay que someter documentos y toda esa, y toda esa área, pero 
sinceramente lo que estamos viendo es que cuando usted ingresa ahí, el formulario se toca como unos 10 a 15 minutos en, 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 en llenar, y después de eso usted va a recibir una contestación directamente al SBA, en la cual le va a estar pidiendo los requisitos que usted necesita sobre los documentos, sea los estados financieros, bancarios, o esos aspectos. Pero sinceramente el proceso es bien corto, es bien fácil, es importante que en el momento que, que las empresas pequeñas ingresen a ese servicio, si es necesario, le dan 10 mil dólares directamente, que un fast, fast funding de 10 mil dólares, y en la misma vez esos 10 mil dólares se van a convertir en un grant, dado que está bajo la área de disaster, de, área de disaster, disaster relief funds. En cualquier pregunta pueden preguntarnos o, o comentando con George y, o con David. Uh, back to you guys. Thank you, gracias. All right, awesome. David, did you get that? Yeah, absolutely. Right, so let me, let me get back to the point to where we can end up sharing the link with everyone. All right. I'm going to end up posting this uh, link also um, inside the chat so you can grab it there if you need to. So in the forums, uh, really, really simple um, to actually complete. So I don't want you to be um, dismayed or worried about it because even in the, the subjects here, it'll actually talk about how it's going to take like a, an hour or two hours to complete. That's just simply not true. Maybe about 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes. Uh, and here are the eligibility verifications for them. So pretty simple to be able to read over them uh, to kind of see um, if you have a business that's not more than 500 employees, for example. Um, also, if you're, you know, an applicant for a tribal small business, um, or if you are an applicant for a, corp a corporation uh, that's less than 500 or a sole proprietor, even uh, independent contractors or insurance agents. So like the, it's really important to take advantage of uh, stimulus things that are offered. Uh, there is a limited amount that the government has actually set aside specifically for um, people who are, who are taking advantage of this. So I would definitely jump on it as, as fast as you can because uh, the, the money won't be there forever. So great point. I just posted the link right there in the comments section if people want, but also I have posted David Fox's name there. So if somebody wants to connect with them directly and just start asking them questions, Francisco's name is right there. If you're a Spanish speaker and, and you're more comfortable there, just reach out directly. Is, is that fine, you guys? Perfect. Absolutely. Okay, great. Uh, David, tell us a little bit about... <laughs> going from financial professional to becoming now an executive producer of a film, a short film for the financial literacy film festival. After watching this thing live last night and seeing some of your counterparts names up there pop up on the screen as executive producer on these films, uh, you know, what was, what was your general feeling in, in experiencing what, what we what we saw last night you know there was a lot of interaction between the actors uh the filmmakers the host uh, and the audience i mean there, you could see there was a lot of feedback in the comments section as we were streaming live so you just as a as a spectator i guess now being brought into the entertainment world and the film world uh being an executive producer just you know tell me what's going on in your mind at this point i'm just really interested in that man it's it's incredible to actually be a part of something like this that is way bigger than I ever imagined uh, it can be and the potential to seeing the vision behind it. Uh, it's, it's amazing to be able to talk to people who are actually putting their time and energy and effort into it because it's that valuable. The information has only been really closely guarded on almost locked away in a closed room from the middle class, um, you know, struggling class and even the upper class. You know, everyone needs to have an opportunity to know exactly what tax codes to take advantage of. Everyone's mentioning, you know, these really high powerful names and oh, they're taking advantage of tax codes that are available and kind of cheating the system. It's actually not cheating the system. You just have to have the knowledge to be able to do it. So yeah, being able to I think one thing you said one time that, that really struck me was you said, George, there's a tax code for the informed and then one for the uninformed. That's exactly. I was like, exactly it. good point. <laughs> so you simply just have to be more knowledgeable. And that's really what we're gaining. Everyone's mentioning, you know, these. Yeah, so um, it's it's important for individuals to, to make sure that they are well informed. 
and to be able to to partnership with with companies that um, that that really struck me was you said George there's a tax code for the informed and then one for the uninformed. I think <laughs> exactly. I, you know, there was a lot of interaction between the actors. <laughs> you simply just have to be more more knowledgeable, and that's really what we're gaining. Everyone's missing you know these. Did we get some feedback there, David? Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, it's it's important for individuals to to make sure that they are well informed. Seems like it's on uh, auto the, the partnership with with companies that. Um, yeah, that really struck me was you said George is the tax code for the informed and the one for the uninformed. Is that on some kind of weird loop? Yeah. yeah, it is on some kind of loop. Okay, I think it's gone. That was me, you guys. I apologize. <laughs> My bad. Okay, ah, oh, where were you at? I'm sorry about that. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, we can start over if you want to. No, I don't want to start over. Uh, tell me about the executive producer thing. You got involved. You got thrown in this thing. Uh, talk to me about that. Yeah. So being an executive producer, uh, it's it was approached to me um, about a lot of creative uh, people who have wonderful ideas. And I had a really big vision. My mission is just to really get information into people's minds, you know, get them into their heads, uh, try to educate them on these codes that we were speaking about. Uh, and also how to be better financially set. But now having an opportunity to actually fund all of these creative minds like yours, George, and everyone who was actually involved, uh, I don't have that creative mindset. So it was amazing to be able to actually fund this project and let, let people just go wild at it. And it's amazing what can happen. All I have is a small idea. Like I want to get information into individuals' uh, minds. I want to teach them. I want them to think a little bit. So as they're watching the videos and the movies that uh, so many are pouring into, just really start to get an idea about like, wow, what's the idea of this? Like, what is there that you could actually put in place that could solve a problem that that movie was actually you know kind of addressing? Last night, last night they screened the movie Unbalanced, little two-minute cute short film, you know, comedy. And the the editor, when I originally sent him the script, because obviously he's the editor, he hasn't seen the footage yet, so he doesn't know what the movie is yet. He's got to read a script and maybe he has to think, okay, there's a movie that I have to cut together. So he reads the script and he was about to pass on it because he's like, that's stupid. What is this? Like what? Well, the next day he went to work. And at his nine to five job, he did a bunch of mundane kind of repetitive things, which later he admitted were stupid. <laughs> and then he's like, oh, I get it. <laughs> it oh, that's it, amazing. You know, your, your, your laughter now like says it all. It's like, he was like, oh my God. Wow. So stupid. Because in the movie, the little kid, he's like, I need a hammer. He is like, the father's like, no, no. And the kid comes back with a bigger hammer. Smash. Yeah. He smashes a big man. He's like, hey. Why are you smashing your piggy bank? Why do you need that money? And he's like, oh, well, if I just had a dollar fifty more, I could buy another piggy bank. And he's like, yeah. what? Like, oh my God, stupid. And then that's the part where Brandon didn't really get it until the next day. He's like, dude, how many times throughout the day are we doing things as backwards as what that little kid yeah. said? You know, I have, a, I have a mentor that actually says, you know, if you can't explain what you're trying to do to someone who's, you know, in the fifth grade, then you're really making it too complicated. And uh, yeah. my son was actually sitting there and watching that movie also. And he's like, Dad, why would he, you know, just break something to to you know expend and buy a new one? You know, and it's simply we make simple mistakes that are, you know, really repetitive in life and not really realizing we're doing that until it's pointed out, especially when you see an easier path. So that was, that was pretty powerful. Fox, the other day. Francisco, did I tell you about when uh, that my Prius broke down on on the last day we were shooting David Fox's film? I love my Prius. I have like three hundred thousand miles on this thing. And I'm like, Wah. I mean, I probably owe Toyota some money at this point. I don't, <laughs> it's a good car, dude. I love that vehicle. But the last, last, last day where we shot the last film of all this, I'm like. On, on cloud nine, so happy. I'm driving home. It's like, boop, my Prius battery dies. And I'm like, no, no, no. Dude, the guy who picks me up, uh, let's call him Mario, in the tow truck, I start talking to him about money, and he's like stressed out. He's just like, uh, I'm like, what's going on? He goes, with all this money, losing everything, I don't know what I'm going to do. And he's, you know, he's an older gentleman, and he feels like 
he does I was like, Mario, let me ask you a serious question right now. Where do you keep your money? He's like, under my mattress. Wow. Francisco. <laughs> wow. I can see how people still stay in the in the they mostly still trust themselves and now there's vacancies out there. Dude, what does that tell tells you a lot of stuff, right? This guy he it's 2020. He's a business owner. He's owned the business of tow truck for 30 years. He's self-employed. He's a pretty smart guy. And he's got like cash stacked up the way most people would love to have at his home under the mattress. I'm not saying this because I want him to get somebody to go to his house. I'm just saying like he's going to be moving that money soon because he had a conversation with Mr. Fox. But a lot of people, they don't even know. They don't even know. Like the, I'm going to tell you the reason I'm bringing all this up. The reason we're financially illiterate, the whole thing about financial literacy and the film festival and having executive producers like this is like he thought if he talked to a guy in a suit and tie, the way Mr. Fox is at work when he goes to work, that he would be calling the IRS or doing this or doing that or like they don't even and he's claimed his taxes like up like 50,000 80,000 100,000 a year for the past 20 30 years or whatever he's done the right thing he's just afraid because over those 20 or 30 years he's accumulated so much that he's kept at home he's just a single guy he's a frugal guy business owner he's like well what if i start putting this back in the bank and they try to tax me again on my own he just doesn't know he's so afraid of the system so he'd rather keep the money under the mattress that's have you ever have, have you ever experienced that francisco do you know people like that yeah especially and i mean a lot of especially after the last uh last financial issues we had back in late late 2000s a lot of people have been very sketchy about what to do with their with the income part you know what i mean and even with starting a small business itself even with the sba loans as we're talking about there's so many outreach programs out there that is is to a reach for not only to start a business, but only to be able to, how am I going to move this? How, gonna, how am I going to make the money work for me instead of me working for the money, which is the key part on it is when do we do, when is that transition that takes in effects? That's a great point. Speak on that a little bit further. Actually, I want you to talk about that more like, uh, make, as entrepreneurs, we know we're supposed to make our money work. But as a small business owner, you don't really know that because you just think I do my job, I get my money. You don't know that next part of the quadrant. You're, you don't know about that passive income. You don't know about making your money work. So explain that a little bit more, Francisco. Well, uh, as you as, as you make that that point, I mean, I usually do. I divide into three different categories. You got your your small business, your side business, and your entrepreneur. Which I mean by that, a, a side business guy is just why you say, I'm just going to work, make my money. I got enough. I just got to work. I know if I do this job, I'm going to get paid this much money. And that's mostly what I'm looking at. You know what I mean? I do this job, I don't have to go get a job, right? Exactly. You know what I mean? I can do this. I can do this. If I can make $1,100 extra a month, I'm good to go. And how am I going to hustle? I, I, the side hustle, like a lot of people want to say. Exactly. You know what I mean? Then you got your way, your small business guys who are like, okay, how am I going to be able to grow this business? I actually, but then there's a lot of steps before we come to the business. Because a lot of people want to go to a bank and like, hey, I'm trying to get a business loan. And the first thing the business guy tell, I want, I want to start up, I want to get a startup business loan. And the first thing they're going to tell you is, well, have you been in business for two years? I'm like, I'm starting starting up my business. You know, when I first, I'm like, what are you telling me? I gotta be in business for two years. So I'm starting starting this thing, and you yeah. tell me I gotta have two years of business. I don't get it. I mean, I learned my way when I started my business with my wife. We started in 2013, a shipping company. One that was the first company we started, and we did a business plan about everything that we did, and we went to the to the SBA, to the local SBA in Georgia. And the first thing they tell us is like, well, are you, how long have you been in business? Like, no, I'm starting to start. I'm like, okay. So you start learning that whole process on it. Okay. Then you got to budget yourself, finding a way how my, what is my operational cost? What is my marketing cost? What, what is all this parts, parts to, for business itself on it? What is my target research? Am I, am I doing a niche market? Am, am I being able to target the right? What is my competitor doing? And is this location really perfect for my business or not? Should I look to another zip code to another county or should I look at a different thing within my business plan to engage within this area? All those factors come to effect when you're looking at a small business person who's trying to actually start a business and see a projection three to five years wherever you're standing on. That's another thing that got me. Oh, I need you to see your projection financial statement. I'm like, 
What yeah. the heck are you telling me? What are you going to make in five years? I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to make next month. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm barely trying to pay my rent right now. And I got all these contracts that I'm trying to get. And guess what? Before I even got my first customer, I was already fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 in the hole. I'm like, what the heck is this? So it's a scary movement. That's why you got to be, you have to be all in on it. And then you got your entrepreneurship part, which, which only has a life cycle of a business. Either you're looking at where to invest, you're looking at starting a business and how long you're going to have that business. You're building that business to build it up and sell it while you're building this business to help you uh, gain funds for your actual uh, business, your final goal business, because a lot of business awesome. you built into it. You know what I mean? I'm like, where am I going to get money for this? Well, the bank's not going to give me money. I mean, a lot of people make fun of Uber, for example. Uber, I think, is the best thing. Somebody can go out there, hustle their way out in one Buy week, get a thousand dollars. You know what I mean? And they need to get some financial money to start moving the their either to invest right now in stocks, invest on mutual funds. Now that the market's low, you know what I mean? People are like, I got no money. Well, go deliver some food to your neighbor for 10, 15 bucks. That's about 10 shares of something out there that just went down. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then in the next six months to 12 months, you're going to get a return that you're never going to think about. That you're not going to get nowhere else. But like I said, there's a lot of information that people out there, they close mind and so with. And, and that's why I like what you guys are doing because you bring this information out there. And it's, it's just opening people's minds up because it's free info. You know what I mean? Nobody's paying for a lot of just for this type of talks. I mean, yeah, they pay a lot of money. Dude, people <laughs> charge money. People charge money, like 10000 5000 for the consulting, coaching, blah, 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 whatever. We know this information is available for free. And for some customers, for some business consultations, yeah, uh, I charge. Of course, that's part of my business. But financial literacy, just the basic points of like what to do to just build yourself, start your business, uh, make the smart money moves and all that. Uh, we're, we want you to be more money smart because if you're going to be our friend and you're going to be hanging out with me, we don't want you to be broke and not knowing about money. We want everybody to be uh, like coming up on the same level. Definitely, definitely. You got to be able to leverage your skills for your benefit. You know what I mean? That's the biggest thing. You got to leverage your skills to be able to grow grow your, your goal. You have to have a goal. Explain that to me. Leverage your skills. Uh, uh, like, for instance, if... For us, use us as an example. How can we leverage each other's skills here? Well, let's say, for example, on your guys' side of the house, on uh, uh, digital marketing that we were talking about, right? You might be your person. You're a very person that's very knowledgeable on, on this area when it comes to movie side, entertainment, being able to get a, get a, a person for real, getting them moving and getting them to the right path and getting them the exposure they need. That right there is a way that you'd be able, and let's say you have a different type of goal. You know, I want to be able to build XYC project in the next three years. But either these skills that I have, I'm going to partner with people who are going to help me. Because remember one thing, I do not have to know, uh, I don't, don't quote me who said this. I know somebody very intelligent said that, that's why I like it. I don't have to be smart, but I have, people around me have to be smart to be able to accomplish my business, point <laughs> blank. And that's what it is. If I have a specific goal, I don't have to know nothing about the movie industry, for example. But if I surround myself with people in the movie industry, guess what? I, I'm a very uh, uh, credible person when it comes to invaluable person with them because I have those connections that I'd be able to leverage to be able to get my business going on the same boat. What I mean by that is like I can do, I do shipping. You're in the movies. Let's say you need to do some shipment down to Korea, China, Europe, anywhere. You need to do a shipment. Hey, you, you can come up to me. That's I can, I, I'll be like, hey, man, I got your shipment moving. And I'll be able to say, okay, how I'll be able to do that at low cost or even as a pro bono wise, because I know between each other, we're going to help each other grow on it. Because what is there for is for us to keep growing. A lot of people think, what do you have to give for what I can get back? No, at the same time, friend, you got to remember, karma itself and life itself is going to give you blessings. You know, sometimes you got to leverage your, your skills in a way to benefit the community on it because you got to give. You but know, a sometimes lot of, a lot of our David Fox, myself, a lot of like our style of business. There's a style, you know, everyone has their own mm -hmm. style is social entrepreneurship. We figured if we do a large event, if we do a bigger event. It, you don't necessarily have to charge somebody money for that one thing that you're doing, but through that large event, you're going to meet that person. She's going to know somebody, he's going to know somebody. And then through that, that person's going to request your skills and now you're going to earn your money. 
So, so by having that large event already, by doing the good deed, by doing the good thing, have the, the whatever with integrity in the community, you're already kind of led to that, to that person who wants to do business with you anyways, or we could have spent the last hundred hours of our life just trying to prospect and prospect and prospect, trying to look for a customer. And we still would have ended up with a customer. We still would have ended up with the same amount of money, but the community would not have benefited with that hundred hours of energy and, and community stewardship. That's the difference between social entrepreneurship and regular entrepreneur is like, we're going to get ours based on what you just described. Eventually down the line, I'm going to get mine because of somebody's going to meet me. They're going to like me. They're going to like what I offer. Especially credibility means a lot. And uh, like I said, if you, if you put, if you put uh, place yourself within your market, your community in a good way, I mean, they're going to take care of you because you're taking care of them. Easy as that. One thing, one thing I loved that when you mentioned the X, Y, Z project, you know, uh, people want to partner with, you, you need to partner with somebody that can help you get there. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Mr. Fox, yes, this yes. is this is where our relationship is like weird but awesome. The normal film producer, the average film producer, is not going to say, you know what? Let me go talk to a financial services professional to get my movie funded, and let me go ask a financial services professional to become my executive producer. Yeah, exactly. but I did that and it worked <laughs> and I'm happy to say it worked. And so this is how our relationship started. But you, when I approached you, you're like, but you're a film guy. You make videos, you do marketing. I, uh, I don't know, George, you're cool. You're funny, but I don't know. And then now that last night happened, the financial literacy film festival became real. Yeah. Now, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, so tell me why this unlikely marriage kind of works. So it, it it is unbelievable. Like the amount of people that will actually come into my office and talk to me about finances just off the whim of a bat would be virtually none. So it's very difficult, but put actually some creative filming. Uh, everyone is involved in something that's called edutainment, you know, that, uh, that George is, is definitely putting out. And uh, it's remarkable because now through the process of film, just watching, you know, real life situations that are happening and folding, it's getting th people to think a little bit deeper. You know, think about, hey, uh, what's my future looks like? Uh, what What is the education or what is my financial situation look like going into the future? And that's a great question to ask. I mean, every once in a while, who else is going to ask that of you if it's not coming from yourself? It's like, will you be protected if another, you know, market reset happens? You know, investing in the, that extra money that you made through Uber and Lyft, like those dollars are hard earned made money. It's like they're working a lot of hours, you know, they're driving around with back pain and all that stuff going through. But people are working really hard for money and knowing that with that amount, you can actually guarantee it from any market loss. Like that's education that people need. The, and, the partnering with the people who could help you get there. It's funny. You look at Francisco and you're like, oh, he's got the Cubs hat and the Pepsi T-shirt. And he's like, hey, dude, invest your money in the stock market. And this is how you're going to double trade. It's like, how the hell does that guy know that? <laughs> but he's like, don't judge a book by his cover. He knows his stuff. Uh, and, and the whole point is sometimes it takes for somebody to know David Fox to get them to the Francisco to help them with that knowledge. Sometimes it takes for them to know the Francisco to get them to the David Fox to get them to the certain thing. Sometimes for me to you to you. That's how this works. You have to be willing to co to collaborate. I agree. I love what Francisco was saying. It's like, you know, I may not know, you know, everything about, you know, finances or, you know, producing a film or all of that stuff, but you know, it's like he knows what he doesn't know and he knows what he doesn't know but he also knows who knows what he doesn't know so just simply knowing that fact he's surrounded himself with a large group of individuals that can help out in any uh, situation it's like your network is is actually creating this huge value uh, because of the people that you surround yourself with now you hit a good point right there sorry to interrupt but yes i always say not knowing is more valuable than knowing reason Ooh. why because every i mean the 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 like how you say society keeps changing things keep changing who would expect in january 1st for example puerto rico got hit with an earthquake i mean more than once 
Then all of a sudden, now we come stateside. We have all this issue coming in now, coronavirus. And bam. You know what I mean? Oh, okay, that's not going to last nothing. Now we're looking at, like, where am I going to leave my house now? You know, I was just talking to a friend of mine who's a, a property manager. He's like, I mean, once this thing comes up, a lot of people are getting evicted, <laughs> point blank, and they got, they're going to go because they're playing this, they think they're playing the system. What you do not know is more valuable than knowing because you got to keep yourself up to date. And it's, sometimes it's harder to, to reach all those networks out there to keep your information up to date. But like guys like you, for example, in the financial side, you know, you, I can be able to say, hey, Dave, hey, what, what's hot right now? What are we looking that I can put my money into in the next three to five years? I, I can get a percentage. What am I looking? Because right now my savings account is giving me 0.001% yearly rate. The CD that I thought that I was going to get money, you're looking, I'm only making $35 out of, what, two years? Come I, on now. I, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> great questions to ask. You know, I heard. Great, great things to think about. Um, like you, I, already speaking with you and, and having conversations with you, <laughs> Francisco, it's, it's awesome what you know, because uh, half of America doesn't even know just that. The, the not knowing is more valuable than knowing. I think some people might even take it as, oh, well, then I need to go learn in the past what I need to go learn. It's like, no, you need to go try to figure out what's about to happen. You need to be a visionary. You need to be trying to be look, staying ahead of the curve here. That's what not knowing means. You need to go try to find out what you think is about to happen. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 you know, you got to talk to the people who know, who, who, who have the best forecast. And one thing to keep in mind is like, one thing's what uh, the TV financial advice that we're getting compared to like uh, professionals that we get on it. Reason why the guys on TV look oh, the market crash. Oh, the market just went 2000 points. You look at me. Well, my stocks are going up. I don't know what that means. I don't really care about it. For example, I know I'm not investing that side of the house. So I don't really care what goes up or not on the market. I just look at my stock. I look at the industry that I like investing. That's what I keep my, 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 my target information. I don't got time to be, looking at the other stuff Same guys like you, know. you exactly guys like david and you yeah. guys to be able to guide us on it uh, like they would be like hey they they would be like hey I, I know you're not into the aviation industry but you might want to look at these airlines right now yeah. <laughs> and let's yeah. look at these stocks <laughs> true it's true yeah that's that's great advice all right you guys we're coming up uh we just hit the one hour mark i like to just cut it off here uh, if you guys have any questions at all about these SBA loans, either contact Francisco or David, inbox them. Uh, this is the Money Talk Show. Uh, we're always trying to talk about something. Uh, the St. Church, we're not asking you for money. We're, we're trying to <laughs> give you pointers on how you can build your wealth and build your money and just come up with, with uh, more steady and long-term strategies to help yourself and your family, basically. So I really appreciate you guys for taking a moment, jumping on last minute with me, but uh, every time I have a little bit of chance to to get this information out here, I'm like, hey, let's just squeeze one in there real quick. So thank you, gentlemen. I really appreciate it's you. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Thank, thank you. you.